Hi, we are Ben and MP and we bought a very cool wooden boat which was rotten and sinking. And then we started rebuilding her from the keel up. Today we'll be working on something that has caused us a lot of trouble in the past, our steering system. We lost the rudder! Before heading into it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You are one click away from making us very, very, very happy. Hello from the engine room. I'm very excited with the works we're doing on the engine now. We are working for a while on connections, water connections, salt water connections, diesel connections, air connections, everything connections. But there's also another group of connections that we haven't tackled yet, which is electric. All the electric connections that will make the starter engine work, the sensors work. So I'm here with my father, who's been the electrician of this rebuild he's been amazing he's been learning a lot and teaching a lot and we're gonna start seeing all the wires we have here in the engine which is a bunch we need to figure out which wire does what connect test replace and then yeah see if we can make all these things work from up from the panel start the engine stop the engine check the sensors and everything i think this is very very exciting and yeah let's get going look at the difference between old wires and new wires Here we find ourselves in this situation with many, 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 many wires that we need to figure out what is what. We were just checking these two as they were together, green and light blue, but very, very dirty. And well, it's already on the other side because the answer is there. And then one by one, we are doing that. You can see here behind me, maybe, these wires are in place because this is the one that stops the engine. It does this movement here connected to the button there we still need to test right we're connecting and then we have to test the button up there if it works and to start the engine as well from there because all the tests we have been running straight from here touching the starter and one by one all these wires i want to tell you about these green and light blue ones looking for those colors of wires i find for example the green one here i try to follow where it goes and I see that it goes here on this that shows me that is the pressure controller. Well, it just shows me that it's not controlling, but this one that shows the pressure. So I already know that the green one is a sensor that will show me the pressure of something. And the green and the light blue are together. The light blue is not coming here. So I follow the light blue and I see that it's coming here which is a simple light which is the alarm so now i know that i have two wires coming from that sensor of pressure one will show me the pres pressure and one will just show me the light in case the pressure is too high and then one by one we are looking at every single wire figuring out what they are where they go changing the old yucky ones for nice shiny new ones and getting this sorted good luck you're on tv looks like a tv P, what wire are you going to cut? Don't cut the wrong wire. I know we haven't done any heavy electrics yet, but this start of changing some wires, trying some connections is so important for me to start getting the taste of it. I'm really, really, really enjoying electrics more than I could ever imagine that I would. And here you can see that the effort is paying off. I don't know if you remember how it was here with all the wires when we got here, but it was such a mess of wires. So of course, electrics wasn't pleasant at all before, but now making it tidy, organized, and also easier to understand makes such a difference and I'm really, really enjoying doing all this electric work. But I know the best is still to come. Now 
we just have to wait for a non rainy day to install the quadrant. We are now ready to install this steering box back to its place. The system we had before with just cogs and ropes wasn't too reliable. If you guys watched our episode number two, we almost knocked out all the sailboats in the marina because we lost control over the rudder. We lost the rudder! Because the rope got stuck inside the cog, like in a knot. We never, ever, ever want to go through such a stress ever again. So the rudder got stuck, completely stuck. And we are in this middle of this channel that's not even big enough for us. So yeah, a lot of stress going on. It was one of the most stressful moments of our journey. And we never want to go through anything like that again. So we really decided back then that we wanted to do something about this system and make it more reliable for us. So we had the idea of adding a motorbike crown for a chain. So the chain can never get all stuck like a rope because it will go through teeth. But for that we need to do many adjustments. So this has been through a lot before we can finally put it back and test this new system that we came up with. job on the lathe are now done. I'm super thankful to Jose because he did an amazing job but also he showed me so many things, taught me so many things and was so kind to even open the machine and teach me many things that he didn't have to but I'm super glad. I thought everything was super interesting. I hope you did too. And now the next step is to bring all these things to the boat. Are you excited for that? Because I am. When it's there, the wooden wheel comes here, but actually what's important now is it's inside, because this is where all the magic and the change just happened. Now, for it to not get interlocked again, we added this. We're super excited about this. We actually invented this system, we had this idea, and when we started doing research, we found out that actually this is how it's done on schooners like Yaba nowadays, so we were very happy that our idea actually already exists and it is good and it's tested, so we're very happy about this. Now, it's all ready to be installed back in place and then we can add the chain, whatever wires, ropes we're gonna use from the chain down to the rudder so we can start controlling the movement of Yaba. I'm back down here. I drilled those two holes into the rudder for this quadrant over here, which is leaning against that little sink. We don't know if we're going to do anything with it or not. Anyway, shut up, Ben. This is going to go up there. Should be a piece of cake. I'm going to tape it off, chuck a bunch of Sikaflex in the holes and also where the quadrant's going to glue onto the hull. The rudder and tighten it. I think that's all there is to it. The 
cushion. I should be wearing a helmet. Can you help me as well? Look up. <laughs> We are trying to figure out where we're gonna have the holes drilled in the transom for the cables to go through or for the pulleys to be. For that, we need to be able to know what the maximum, it's actually turning right now, wrap is up there. We need to know what the maximum turning is or the maximum uh, angle is of the rudder. Also, we need to know what the shortest distance is from one of those rings to the transom, so which direction it travels. Also, it's getting caught on the keel. The keel is going to be cut because it has to be shortened for the propeller. I want to do it as correct as possible, and the way to do it as correctly as possible is to do it step by step. Very nerve wracking because you don't want to get this wrong. Let's cut. We're going to make the platform change a bit of shape because you can set it's a lot easier to sacrifice a little bit of that platform than it is of the screw and it'll look a lot nicer as well once we cut the platform I think the quickest way is going to be a chainsaw from up there you can probably see exactly what I want to cut you see how everything's making a nice round shape and then this plank here is sticking out so it's literally going to be a continuation so that's what's going to be cut with a chainsaw it's like that fat. Of course, exactly. So the first cut, exactly there was a nail. I cut a bit further out, another nail. Same on this side, exactly where I wanted to cut. Let me flip it. A nail. So I think from now on we're going to try and get this nail out and then grind the rest down with a 24 grit sanding paper. Make it look nice. But the chainsaw already took a lot away. And I just remembered it was Purple Heart, the main, the frames of it. But yeah, we're almost there. I'm breaking the platform. I see. So yeah, that's the line I wanted to make. There is that bugger. And you made sure that. I had a blunt chainsaw to work with, fun. Just started raining in time for me to finish. I've just managed to chisel away enough for the rudder to turn completely before the quadrant hits the other bit of platform and not just the screw. So we've got the maximum turning of the rudder. Now we need to, I don't know, it started raining, what now? Nico's still here working on the beautiful sun, hoping the sun will come out. I think I'm gonna grab the chainsaw as it's out already and cut a part of the keel away so the propeller can actually turn. If you honestly know how humid it is, everything's steaming up.
if you watch this from the beginning, you know that just the noise of the chainsaw would be reason for me to be on tears because I was so upset that every day coming to the yard something else was being destroyed. Of course I've been preparing myself for this and I know this is for the best but I can't help but feeling a bit of pain but watching the chainsaw going and going forever but yeah we are healing Eva and I'm just trying to focus on that and now I can finally enjoy the noise of the chainsaw first because it's not nostalgic and second because we're doing something good we are building not destroying anymore technically we're destroying destroying but for a good reason well it was always for a good reason initially it was going to be a vertical cut over here but then you'd have the turbulence of this not working well on the prop it's a good suggestion from Pedro, our neighbor, that if we do it this way, we'll have more water flow coming, a little bit more water flow coming in here into the lowest bit of the prop. This is what we've gotten right now. I mean, this is what Adilson got right now. Uh, thank you, Pedro, for the idea of giving us this space, actually. It makes so much sense. And we made this little V-shape as well, so the water doesn't create the turbulence and it hits the lowest bit of the prop. Once we put the cardan in, we'll see if the prop moves forwards and backwards and we can make some small adjustments here anyway, because now I think it is very, very close. For now, I'm very, very chuffed with this. Let's move over to the next step, which is connecting this to the engine. I'm working on this big thing over here, getting it attached to something called a steering wheel. It is a miserable day outside, but that doesn't mean the work stops. We can't resin, we can't paint, we can't do much outside. However, inside there's always work to do. And now that we've got the lights up, hanging, or screwed to the roof, that always helps working inside on a cloudy day. What's going on right here? I'm gonna show you quickly. Adjilson has finished placing all these very nice battens that go all around every single joint from wood to roof or from beam to roof or from, let's see, little all the walls. And now he's got to move over to the next thing which is the hanging the wires up. I've already done a quick test over here and it looks nice, I, th I think. They're just little conduits uh, that are gonna hide the wires. There's not many, but we're gonna get them done. Also, and Piano Orlando are over here they have already placed all the electrics. Have a look at this. So we've already got our Victron smart solar charge controller. We've got our Aura Orion. This is all the wiring that's on the boat. It's all done, it's right here. We've got the smart dongle and the smart shunt. They're all, the electrics are in place. And it only took what, 10 minutes? Ben's being very silly. We are just starting to play with electrics. My dad printed all the equipment in the real size so we could play around with their positioning. We are here on his phone just checking all the connections, discussing what's next so we can really start. So this is how the electrics journey is starting. This is the first step. I am very, very excited because at first I said like, I wanna learn engine, I can do plumbing, I can do carpentry, but don't call me if for anything that has to do with electrics but now I'm really getting very keen about it I'm curious about it after installing the lights I started liking electrics so I'm very excited with all this installation a bit nervous because it's a first but I think it's gonna be very cool even this guy he's always on deck barking in the, in the sun he came in you're very bad to focus on because he's so black he's like a black hole of light If you have a look over here, we had loads of pieces of tape 
which we taped the inside of these to make sure we could still open them. And all I'm doing, drilling a nice hole through it, rounding the edges with a router, and well, we still need the clip system, which will be next. I might even go and get them today. But uh, yeah, uh, the system we chose eventually is literally two little pieces of wood on the bottom because we didn't want the hinges because we didn't know if the cushions were gonna prevent the hinges from opening completely. So we just have, we've got these small latches, which makes it really handy when you want to access, for example, the electrics. Let's say you take away the backrest. What's in here? You want to take the backrest, put cushions away. All you do, pull this out and you've got full access to everything. Three latches here, you put back, and you simply click it into place when it's done. Durability test. Durability. Wow. And? Kids on board one day. Stop it. You like it? Yeah, very cool. I like the wooden finish on this one. Right, me also, too. Beacon Sales, thanks for having all these lights because without you, we would still be looking. True. They're and amazing. would still not be happy. <laughs> Can you turn it off? I want to show the wood. There. Nice. Whoa, it's your compliment. There you go. <laughs> Look, there's no budging around here. Look at this. No one complain that the wiring is done badly, okay? <laughs> now, we have spent a long time looking for catches, I think they're called, for doors. And we ended up finding these. Nothing special about them. They're not stainless. They're not brass or bronze. They're just very cheap catches and we were happy with them however I was refusing to buy another batch of them for these over here because I just thought there must be something else out there and we found some really really cool ones thanks to Akibra uh, Christian and Andrea thank you so much for having these in stock for us look at that let me just a little catches I'm just gonna go here so all I'm gonna do now Let's find a way to install them all. I think we've got like, we've got a ton of these. All here, all around. And we've got some extras to replace the bad ones. Because yes, once you find something like this in the nautical world, here in Brazil, looks like gold. And for me, it is gold. It's like crazy. So, without further ado, soon this is all going to be very nicely put in place. This is gonna make it so much easier.
this is proving to be a pain like every mill I mean for you who've installed these know that every millimeter means it's gonna catch or not every millimeter right or left means it's gonna miss anyway it does kind of go on there we go but it pops open here as well it does pop hard but it'll pop open I need to work around a little bit but anyway I'm going to continue that tomorrow to make sure it's just a click click on and off. In the meantime over here, you can see we're getting more and more light. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. And then P is in this room, Hi. about to get electrocuted. Hey, no. I'm about to give light to the toilet. We did just the hallway over there and the bedroom that was missing. And it's exciting. I finished doing this, it was dark at night, but now it's all correct and in place and ready. You can see it. It works. Now that I got the hang of installing lights, there are no more lights to install and I need to go for the next step of my electrics journey, which is installing all the components and batteries and everything that's ahead of me. I'm a bit nervous about it, but I'm also very excited. We are so happy with what we have with the steering system already. I think we've advanced a lot. We have a few more things to do, of course, but once the rain lets us do that, we're gonna get straight to it and get that rudder steering. And of course, we wanna give you a big thank you, Alex, Lassie, and Melody for joining us on Patreon. And thank you, John, for supporting us through PayPal. And thank you so, so much, David Douglas, Jens, Malcolm, Joseph, and Duane for leaving us a super thanks here on YouTube. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you all for watching too, and see you all next Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe. The small things that we do, sharing a word or two.